fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're on the trail of outlaws. Oh, Silver! Jim Blood ruled the town of Oneida with an iron fist. His business code was blunt and profitable. Peace at a price. Law-abiding citizens who wished to live unmolested were forced to pay him or suffer the consequences. Ruthless gunmen, masked riders who came in the night, terrorized those who refused, and no one dared defy them. Even the law was helpless, for Blood disguised his activities with a cloak of respectability. We find him talking to the owner of a cafe. Nice place you got here, Colby. I like it, Blood. How's business? Can't complain. Why? Oh, just curious, Colby. Looks like you've got a mighty popular cafe. Be a pity if anything happened to it. What do you mean? Well, you never can tell with outlaws on the prowl. They'd better not come here. Huh? What would you do? I'd show them a trick or two with a six-gun myself. Yeah, Dave Finley tried that. You heard what they did at his place? Yeah, the low-down skunks. Beat up old Finley and burned his store to the ground. Yeah, don't seem to be any way to stop them outlaws. They're worse than outlaws. They're parasites. Gunmen who forced people into paying for protection they wouldn't need if it weren't for the gang. Finley would have showed more sense by giving them the cash. What? Sure. He suffered worse by opposing the gang. Them gunmen was to come in here. My advice would be to pay up and shut up. What do you know about it, Blood? Me? Why, nothing. I just said... Seems to me you've said a mic too much. Why, you old moss horn. I'm inviting you to leave before I start practicing with that six-gun. Have it your way, Colby. Wouldn't take a chance if I was you. Why, that dirty buzzard... That smooth-talking skunk. What was he saying, boss? Barkeep, that snake came here for just one reason. What is that? To warn me. He as much as said that if I didn't pay off, I'd be smashed. You figure blood is leader of the outfit that's been smashing things around here? I know it. But there ain't no way to prove it. What'd you tell him? I told him I wasn't going to pay. I told him I... You said the wrong thing. Look, the doorway. Masked men. Hey, what's the masks for? Everyone stay still or be dead men in the wreckage. Smash the place, boys! Stop it! My cafe! You dirty, ornery, low life rats! You'll pay for this! You'll pay, I tell you! Shut up, Colby! Maybe you need protection from gents like us! Blood's 
campaign of intimidation and terror held the town helpless in his grasp. His gunmen, led by the ruthless renegades Hutch and Drake, roved the streets of Oneida, revenging the gang boss on townspeople who refused or were unable to meet his demands. Harvey Myers made a living from a small gold claim. Like Colby, the cafe owner, he too had callers who wore masks. You're two weeks overdue in your payments. Uh, protection pay. Jim Blood sent you here. <laughs> Make sure your facts, Myers. Fill up the claim, boys. Dane Whitaker was president of the bank. I'm not paying another cent. Give us a key to that safe. That's the depositor's money. Grab them, boys. Take the cash and wreck the bank. Come on. <laughs> night in the back room of a vacant house, Hutch and Drake, leaders of the gunmen, reported to Jim Blood. How'd it go, Hutch? Fine. Collect any cash? Yeah, here. Good. Got another job for you. Who? Tad Loomis. He owes us plenty. Tad Loomis, huh? That's the young squirt who just got married. Yeah, he's been shooting off his mouth a lot to the ranchers too, Blood. You know, about the way we're running things. We'll take care of that. He's building a ranch just outside of town. You aiming for us to go out there now? Yeah. Only this time, I'm going too. Hey. Thought you didn't want to be seen on any of the jobs. Yeah. I'll get Loomis alone. And he can't prove anything. His word against mine. Well, uh, what about his wife? She's visiting relatives ten miles from here. Gonna settle with him tonight and have an understanding. You two will go along just in case you're needed. But you can wait outside the house. Come on now, let's get going. In the dark shadows of night, three horsemen reined in their mounts a short distance from the attractive, brightly lighted ranch house where Tad Loomis lived with his bride, Jane. Squinting at the house through his small, shrewd eyes, Jim Blood motioned to Drake and Hutch, who accompanied him, and together the three outlaws crept stealthily toward the ranch. Their feet scraped softly in the gravel. Then Blood signaled a halt. Wait right here outside the door. Here yeah, we savvy. I'll call if I want you. Wait a minute, I'm coming. Maybe you were sleeping. Quiet. Well... Oh. Hello, Blood. This is a surprise. Got something to talk over with you, Tad. Mind if I step in? No. No, of course not. Come on. Well, what's on your mind? I suppose you've heard about the way certain people have had trouble. A banker and Colby in the cafe. What about it? I understand you were invited to hire some men that would see that you didn't have any trouble. You know, lots of things could happen to this nice place of yours. What are you getting at? You want the cards face up, huh? I can see the cards. It's pretty generally known that you're the boss of the gang of crooks. Hmm. I suppose folks have a right to their suspicions. Surprised that you come here in person. Maybe I should be flattered at so much attention. Listen to me, you young pipsqueak. You want it straight and you'll get it that way. We're here alone, and there's no use you trying to make trouble for me without witnesses. You either pay up right now or see what happens. No witnesses, huh? You thought Jane was out of town. Well, get your hands up. Jane, come on in here. I heard him threaten you, Ted. Now we've got evidence. So you didn't go away. Well, you should have it. It has saved lots of trouble. Come on in, boys. Drop the gun. Oh. Ted, Ted. You killed him. You killed him. Grab that woman. I've got her. Hey, Give me those unlighted me. lamps. Smash them. Spill oil around here. Yeah. She's a fighter. Here's a couple of them, boss. Spread the coal oil. We'll set fire to this place. You beast. You filthy God. beast. Hang on to her. Take her with us in case that critter survives the fire. Here's more lamps. That'll do. Yeah. You want to leave him there on the floor? Yeah. Now, give me that lighted lamp. We'll start things going. Yeah, here it is. Let yep. me go. Yeah, this place will burn like tinder. Give me a hand with this girl. Let me go. Let me go. Take her out. I'd sooner die here than go with you. Hurry it up. Hutch, give Drake a hand. Yeah. Get her to the hideout and hold her there, and I'll join you later. 
Now hurry up before we're trapped in this fire. Right, come on, you first. As the flames from the smashed lamp ignited the coal oil, a veritable curtain of fire leaped through the living room of the ranch. The flimsy furniture and new lace curtains, which Jane had so proudly put up only a short time before, were ready fuel for the now raging inferno. Thick palls of smoke settled over the room, almost obscuring the inert form of Tad Loomis, struggling for consciousness against the smoke and the flames which rapidly threatened him. Then as the outlaws rode away from the flaming ranch house with the girl they had kidnapped, two horsemen raced toward the fire. One of them wore a black mask and rode a white stallion. The other was an Indian who sat a paint. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's too late to save the house, Toto. Huh? It burned plenty fast. We'll make sure no one's trapped by the blaze. Come on. Uh, help me. Listen. Help. That man trapped inside. Come on, this way. Uh, smoke plenty thick. <coughs> Not see man. No. Hello. Where are you? Over here. Hold on. We're coming. But you wouldn't find me. Now don't talk. Take his feet, Tonto. Uh-uh. Here you go. Can't walk inside. I've got his shoulders. Ready, Kimo Sabi? Uh, be ready. Hurry. This roof will cave in any minute. Over there, Tonto. Uh, door ahead. Look out! The roof! Hurry, Tonto. In an arroyo some distance from town stood a drab, weather-beaten cabin, half concealed by a clump of cottonwood trees. Inside the cabin, Hutch and Drake sat at a table playing cards, while from behind them came a girl's low, uncontrollable sobs. Your deal, Hutch. Yeah. Yeah, blasted. What's eating? Yeah, that girl, sniffling and crying. Can't keep my mind on the game. Yeah, she's been bawling her head off ever since we brought her here. What's blood want her for, anyway? We took care of her husband. What are we saving her for? I don't know. Maybe he wants to guard against any slips, like Tad being alive with a mind to talk. Yeah, the only talking Tad will do will be to the ghosts. The bullet didn't finish him where the fire did. Oh. Oh. Where are you going? To stuff a gag in a girl's mouth. If I hear another whimper out of her... No rough stuff. Box might not like it. Come here, you. Let me go. Oh, you little minx, you bit me. I warned you. Why, you? Hey, what's going on here? Oh, uh, howdy, blood. We've been waiting for you, boss. I go that girl, Hutch. I got plans for her. Just as you say. Murderers, all of you. You killed my husband. He had it coming to him. And if you don't do just like I say, you'll get the same. What do you mean? It's a big ranch your brother Ned owns on the other side of town. I reckon he has plenty of cash. You're wasting your time. Ned wouldn't pay you a cent any more than Tad. Well, maybe not. But he'd pay plenty to uh, save your life. You don't mean it. <laughs> Jake and me was wondering why you wanted the girl, boss. <laughs> we didn't figure on anything as slick as this. No. Well, you didn't think I'd miss a chance for easy cash, did you, boys? Ned won't give it to you. Get a paper and pencil from that table, Hutch. Oh, sure. Ned will know you killed Tad. He'll have you hanged, all of you. He'd have to show proof first. Where'd he find it in them ashes that's left of your house? You, you fiend. <laughs> Here's a paper and pencil, blood. Give them to the girl. Here, you. I, I won't take them. Oh, yes, you will. Now, write what I say. No, I won't do it. You won't get a cent from my brother. I'll show her. Hold on, Hutch. I'm giving you one more chance, Jane. What? Write that letter. I tell you, I won't. You can't make me. I'd sooner die than write it. Now, don't worry about that. We won't kill you. If you don't write it, your brother will die. Just like Ted. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The day after Jim Blood's threat, a man poked among the blackened timbers of the once attractive but now fire-gutted ranch house where Tad Loomis had lived with his bride, Jane. Suddenly, he heard a commanding voice. Put up your hand. Masked? What are you doing here? Uh, I guess you know why I'm here. You're looking for Tad Loomis. What if I am? You came to make sure he's dead. Yes. I couldn't believe it. I wanted to find out for myself. And for Jim Blood. What? I suspected Blood would send one of his gang to make sure Tad couldn't expose him. You aren't fooling me. You're the outlaw. Blood sent you to spy on me. Don't lie. Oh, I... If it weren't for those guns... You're coming with me. Well, where are you taking me? To face the man you tried to murder. <laughs> In the Lone Ranger's camp, beside a creek which trickled through a narrow ravine, Tonto bathed Tad's wound, the result of Drake's bullet before the masked man and the Indian rescued the young rancher from the fire. Along the trail, they saw two horsemen approaching. Well, it's your friend, Tonto. I can tell by his white horse. Ah, uh, that's Silver. Who's that riding with him? Me not know. Well, oh, my uh, soul. You, you must... I guess I'm not as well as I thought. Uh, you've got bad wound. Have now escape. Uh, thanks to you, too. I only knew what's happened to Jane. Oh, maybe we find out now. Tonto, that man riding with your friend. Hold, 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 hold. Ned! Tad! Tad, I can't believe it. I thought you were dead. You know this man, Tad? Yes, he's Jane's brother. I see. Tad, what have they done to you? Well, they've saved my life. I, I don't understand. This man's a mask, and this Indian, they're outlaws. He's a big fella. They both made a mistake, Ned. I don't know. I want to help Tad. That's right. Tell me about Jane. Is she... Is she safe? Uh, temporarily, yes. What do you mean? Jane's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? How do you know? This note was delivered to me this morning. It wasn't signed. It tells how to ransom Jane. Well, let me see it. Jim Blood is the one. I suspected as much. Ned, is this your sister's handwriting? It's genuine. There's no question about that. I'd know Jane's handwriting anywhere. Uh, what note say? It's addressed to Ned, Kimosabe. Unless he delivers $10,000 to the gang at Painted Rock tonight at midnight. Jane will die. What have you done about the ransom, Ned? I withdrew $10,000 from the bank. Keep your money, Ned. We'll save Jane and without spending a cent. Instead of ransom, we'll give him the end of a rope. We don't know where Jane is, Ted. We'll surround those crooks at Painted Rock. Make them tell us where they're holding her. The note says for Ned to come alone. What if he does They'll have it... men watching the trail. First sign of an attack, they'll escape. It might cost Jane her life. Ah, oh, gosh... I didn't think of that. Well, what do we do? Comply with the terms of the note, Ned. You mean... Take $10,000 with you to Painted Rock. No. Oh. oh, I can't let him do that. Jane's my wife. If anybody pays the ransom, it should be me. I haven't the money. If my plan works, the money will be returned, Tad. Returned? And there'll be enough evidence to wipe out blood in his whole gang. That night, in the glow of a full moon, the sinister shadows of creeping men stole into the dark patch cast by a painted rock. Some took concealed positions overlooking the trail, and silence hung like a heavy pall as the gang settled down to watch for waiting for Ned's arrival with a ransom. What time is it, Drake? I don't know. Must be close to midnight, though. Yeah, I wish the girl's brother would hurry up and come. This quiet gives me the willies. Yeah, you'll feel better when we get that $10,000 ransom, Hutch. Maybe he won't show. Yeah, he'll show. Blood says the girl and her brother are thicker than two peas. He'll put up the cash rather than take a chance. Reckon you're right. Listen. Hey, Hutch. What is it, Limpy? Horseman coming down the road. Looks like it might be Ned. Is he alone? Yeah. Let me see. That hombre's double-crossed us and brought a sheriff's posse with him. We'll high it before we put our necks in a noose. Yeah, he's alone, all right. Ain't nothing besides him between here and town but gopher holes. That's why Blood picked this spot. Nobody can creep up on us. Oh! Oh, boy, oh! Lift them hands. You needn't worry. I'm not armed. Looks like you took your instructions to heart. I'll not take chances where my sister's safety is concerned. Good. You got the cash? It's in this envelope. Blindfold him. Blind for me? What for? boss is kind of particular about keeping the location of the hideout a secret? Round up your men. Right away. Get your horses, boys. We're ready to ride. <coughs> All right, boys. Get going. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Oh, 
Scout. Oh, fella. Mm. The gang's almost out of sight, Tonto. Uh. Their trail shouldn't be hard to follow in this moonlight. That's right. Well, we were lucky to find that crevice in the rock so we could keep out of sight. Tonto, blood won't let that girl go. He knows she can testify against him. Follow the trail, Kimasabi. I'll join you later. Uh. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Mr. Some time later, the outlaws, led by Hutch and Drake, rode up to the hideout where Blood was waiting. Removing the blindfold from Ned's eyes, they pushed him into the dimly lighted cabin. Ned! Ned, oh, Ned! Jane! Jane, let me look at you. Are you all right? I'm all right, Ned. I... Regular family reunion, ain't it? What? Jim Blood. Break it up, Hutch. You heard him, you two. Break it up. Don't push me. I have a right to talk to my... Leave him alone! Sit down. You beast! You contemptible beast. Shut up or I'll hand you the same. Where's the ransom? Here it is, blood in this envelope. <laughs> Ten thousand in folded money. Ten one thousand dollar bills. Don't look like much, does it, boys? But it's just as good as gold and a lot easier to carry. Hey, when do we split the cash, boss? When I'm of a mind to, Drake. You'll get your share, don't worry. I've carried out my part of the bargain, blood. I expect you to carry out yours. Huh? What do you suggest, Ned? Let me take my sister home. Did you hear that, boys? They want to go home. <laughs> you take me for a fool. You ain't going anywhere. Either of you. He won't let us go. I, I tried to let you know in the note. Between the lines. You dirty double-crosser. You knew you weren't going to let me take Jane when you made her write that note. You're getting warm. Blood, you've got your money. Jane and I can't mean anything more to you. Let us go. At least let Jane go. Yes. $10,000 was easy cash. Maybe there's more where it came from. I don't understand. Well, I'll make it clear to you. If you was to write to your bank instructing them to pay the bearer of your note $10,000, they'd give it to him, ain't that so? But I haven't got $10,000. No? How much have you got? I've, uh, practically none. The money I gave you was just about all I had. Don't lie to me. It's the truth, I tell you. Most of my income is tied up in cattle on the ranch. Well, that's too bad. I'm downright sorry for you, Ned. You should have taken care to keep more ready cash. It might have saved your life. Oh, Ned! What do you mean, Blood? If you're no longer any use to me alive, there's no sense in my letting you stay that way. And Jane? I'm figuring on a double funeral. <laughs> What'll it gain you to kill us, Blood? You'll just be putting your neck in a noose. You're a little mixed up, Ned. I'd be inviting a rope if I didn't kill you. You and the girl would make mighty handsome witnesses for the sheriff to pin this kidnapping on me. We won't talk. I give you my word. Well, I ain't taking any chances. I know your lips will stay buttoned when you're six feet under. It's no use, Ned. He's meant to kill us from the first. Murder us in cold blood, just as he did Tad. Tad isn't dead, Jane. What's that? Ned, I... I don't understand. You said... Tad's alive. He didn't die in that fire. Ted, alive? Oh, I... I can't You're believe lying. it. Don't you wish I was? We put a bullet in him before we started the blaze. We left him baking in the middle of an oven. He didn't have a chance to break out. He didn't break out. He was rescued. Rescued? Yes. Two men saw the flames. They dragged Tad out just before the roof caved in. Thank heaven. Who are these hombres? Well, one of them wears a mask. The other's an Indian. Blood, that sounds Does like... Does the masked man ride a white horse? Oh, yes. Calls him Silver. Silver? I'm hightailing it out of here. Me too, Hutch. I've been up against that hombre before. What's eating you two? Who is this masked critter anyway? He's a lone ranger. Yeah. And knowing him, he's on our trail right now. The lone ranger? You double crosser. You've been in cahoots with that critter all the time. I didn't even know who he was. Oh, I suppose you didn't go to the sheriff for that ransom note either, huh? No, I didn't. Before I'm through with you, you'll wish you had. Watch the trail from that window, Hutch. You can see a posse approaching in plenty of time for us to make a getaway. Yeah, I'll watch for him. Grab a hold of that girl, Drake. Come here, you. Let go of me. Take care of you now, Ned. Don't shoot. I'm handing you a one-way ticket to a graveyard. No, don't do it. Shut up, you. Your number's up next. Blood. What do you want? Something's wrong with the chimney. It's choking with smoke. What? It must be stopped up. Smoke's coming back down the chimney instead of going out. Tell him put out the fire, you fool. I can't. Fireplace is so full of smoke, I can't get near it. Do something, Drake. Open the windows. Ain't no use, Blood. Place is too full of smoke already. Oh, my eyes are smart and so I can hardly see. <coughs> can't breathe either. Open the door. Let's get out of here. <coughs> Bring the girl, Drake. I'll take Ned. Come on. Uh, 
Now we can breathe. Yeah. Get the smoke out of our eyes, too. Hey, look up on the roof. A redskin's up there with his blanket over the chimney. No wonder it was stopped up. I'll riddle that engine. Do oh, my hands, him, the masked man. Put down your guns. We've got you covered, you low-down snake. The sheriff, too. We've been tricked. We ain't licked out. Call the boys. We'll fight it out. You're too late. Your gang's already surrendered to my men. Take us, Tonto. Uh, me get him. Take your hands off me, engine. Ed, you handle right. I'll handle hand. him, and it won't be gently, the skunk. Oh. I want you, blood. I'll fan leather first. I wouldn't try it. Stay where you are, you masked coyote, or I'll drill the girl. Come on, Silver. I warned you. You winged me again. Take over, Sheriff. Jane and Ned will supply you with enough evidence to jail the entire gang. I've been waiting a long time for this, blood. You and them other polecats have been running things to suit yourselves. Just because I couldn't prove what a crooked, slimy bunch you were. But now I've got proof. And from now on, the whole lot of you will be looking at things from behind bars. If we hadn't been smoked out of that cabin, you wouldn't have had any evidence. We'd have killed the girl and her brother and riddled you. <laughs> yeah, the masked man figured you would. That's why he wouldn't let my men attack you while you were inside. Ted. Oh, Ted. Oh, Jane. Ted, I... I thought you were dead. I would be, honey, if it hadn't been for Tondo and the mass man. The Lone Ranger, Ted. The Lone... So that's who he is. And he wouldn't even stay to be thanked. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 